Welcome to the Picky Nerds, and it's tier list time. Spot removal tier list time. This is your host, BZ. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds, bringing you <laughs> videos every day, and that really caught me off guard. But if you want to support <laughs> the channel, Patreon.com is the best way to do it. There's links in the description for you. Yes, uh, we love all of our patrons as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. We appreciate the direct support, so go there, use that link, and support us directly. You can also use our links to support us indirectly. We have a TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. Go to TCG Player using our link. Now you just buy the cards you'll buy anyway at the exact same price, but we get a kickback and the channel is supported. Thank you for that too. If you're interested in buying things at the exact same price, go ahead over to dragonshield.com. There's an EU or a US link, and if you buy sleeves there for the same price, you're supporting the channel indirectly via the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. You'll be extremely happy. Seriously, we use Dragon Shields on every single one of our decks. That's no joke. It's not. In this video, like all of our videos, is brought to you by Moxfield.com. If you think you know where the ad is, put your guesses in now. I think some people have been cheating, but I, I it's just speculation. They've been, every video, uh, every other video has a spot on guess, which seems a little suspect. That's the that's the miracle, because if you get it right, I was just going to say you cheated, because it's impossible. <laughs> you can never got win. Him. We got them. Yeah, it was a trick the whole time. And... Yeah. This isn't a trick. It's a happy birthday wish to all the people whose birthdays are today. Yes. Uh, so let's just get into this tier list. We're doing spot removal. And in order to do a tier list, I mean, we have to be a lot smaller than this. So why don't we shrink down, BZ? We can. Okay. <laughs> Our elbows touch. It was electric. It was really gross. I've replaced Amber with a computer. So now we can do the actual tier list. One thing, we're defining spot removal as any spell that's going to destroy... One or more, but not all of a certain type of thing. Yeah, so something like, uh, what's to say, Cyclonic Rift is a spot removal spell on one side, but it's a board wipe on the other side. We're not counting that because the board wipe is what makes it good. Uh, and because there's a board wipe side to it, we're not counting it dams the same kind of way. Vandal Blast. Vandal Blast. Anything that can uh, double as a board wipe, we're not counting those. Right, there's still spot removal, and you could call them that, but this is really going to the spirit of like a one for one or a two for one. There's also a lot of spot removal. I want to say, um, I don't think we got to encapsulate a lot of stuff that people play. Like I had to leave some stuff off of this because we, we do 25 in these videos. Which it's not 25. It's a lot. It's some of the most played. Um, I actually left off a couple of the multicolored ones that I thought weren't as relevant because I wanted to get other ones in that I feel like I thought were relevant. So these are basically the top 25 spot removal spells as just defined by us. They really want us to get into this because it's been a while. So let's go to Anguish Dead Making. It's three mana, and you exile another permanent, and you lose three life. Yeah, uh, so Anguish Dead Making is really good. I mean, when we talk about uh, spot removal, three mana is where I want versatility. Right. So I'm spending a premium. This is the premium cost. This is about as high as I want to go for a single target spot removal spell. So what I'm looking for in this, I'm looking to hit any permanent type, maybe excluding land. Sometimes, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do. We got that here. That's exactly what we get. We get to exile two on top of that, so things aren't dying. They're not going to the graveyard. They can't be re uh, recurred. So I'm really high in anguish to making. The downside of this card is in black-white, uh, which is the best two colors for removal mm -hmm. in all of Commander. So it's, it has high competition, but it's still making the cut of a lot of my decks. Where do you have this? I would think C or B. Um, I'm thinking definitely B, because I was an A or B, so I think we can meet in the middle of B. It's a very good card. Like I'm, like I said, I'm I'm high on these three mana answer anything. There, there is a very close comparison to English I'm making that we're way less high on. But let's go to Assassin's Trophy. These are in alphabetical order, of course. Every tier list is it's two mana, blow up a permanent that you don't control, and they get to go search for a basic land and put it in untapped. Two mana answer anything, but. You kind of can't play it on, like, turn two or three because then they're they're ramping a lot. Yeah, like you said, this is a really good card, and early game, you're ramping them quite a bit. So when you're answering, like, a, a permanent that costs two mana and giving them a whole land... For, like, seven turns. For, like, seven turns, that's going to give them a huge mana advantage. I do like Assassin's Trophy, though. Um, I don't play a lot of green-black decks. Uh, that's something I'll say. I BZ's more of the green-black kind of person, but when he plays green-black decks, they spin wheels and tend to have, like... 50 creatures in them, so they don't tend to have room for things like Assassin's Trophy. That side, I think Assassin's Trophy is just great. It's a really great magic card. It, this one uh, like goes all the way into CDH because of how good it is and the fact that it can hit literally any permanent. Yeah, do you want to give it top of B? Uh, I was thinking A. I bottom was, of A? Uh, yeah, bottom of A, top of B, that area. Um, it's, it's just a really good card. Again, I think what keeps it from S is 
multicolored. It's in a lot less decks because of that. And the fact that giving a land is a big resource, so you want to hold on to this and make sure you're hitting something juicy. Get, get rid of something juicy. Yeah, it, and also a lot of green-black decks tend to have a million creatures, and then I stay away from it a little bit more when I'm doing that. These next ones, Joe plays all the time, whenever possible. It's Generous Gift and Beast Within. They're the same card, so they're in the same slot. Yeah, uh, again, uh, we're in the same, we're here again. We're at the three mana, we're spending it, so what are we going to get? We want to be able to hit anything, and these do that. They give a 3-3 three, three elephant away, useless. Don't care about it, might as well not even be there. Couldn't it's, matter less. It could not matter less. I, I, even though, I have never seen the 3-3 three, three elephant matter almost ever. It's like one in ten times it matters a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm here again. I think it's, these are better because they're single color now. Uh, you get a huge boost when they're in a single color because they go in so many more decks. Easier every, to cast. It, and easier to cast. Every single green deck gets to play Beast Within if it wants it. So I'm I'm higher on these. Uh, I still am not quite an S tier, though I do play them at that rate. I think I'm in high A. High A, that works. I will say Beast Within is more playable than Generous Gift because white's better at removal, green can't enter creatures, so Beast Within's kind of a color pie break where it just turns a creature into a 3-3. It is, uh, definitely for sure. Beast Within's slightly better, but they are color-shifted cards. We're just going to judge them together. Yeah, you don't want to see two slots. Like, 10 minutes from now, we talk about Generous Gift. Well, do you want to see Generous Gift and Beast Within? And Generous Gift is just here. It just They'd be next to each other anyway. The pitches are next to each other. Deal with it. And you push <laughs> out like some other removal spell that you don't get to hear about. Like Bedevil! Where would you be if we didn't know what we thought about Bedevil? It's three mana and it's three pips, and you destroy an artifact creature or a planeswalker. Now this is like, whoa, it's, it's funny that the order kind of works out this way. It's like, well, this is three mana, it's an instant, and it hits multiple types, but we kind of hate it. This card isn't bad, but it's a card I never feel the need to go to because black is so good at creature removal. We're going to go through a lot of cards, and one, I would have to not be in a creature deck to even consider this, right? Because once I'm in a creature deck, there's a lot of good creatures I want to put in the places in order to keep my creature count higher. Okay, uh, Planeswalker, worthless. Uh, that's not really a type we're looking to hit. I know it's on Generous Gift, but it's like, that's gravy. Gravy Flavor on that text. Text. Flavor text, because we don't care about that. We don't care about hitting that. Red is amazing in answering artifacts. In three mana, answer a creature is not that good. This card is, it's okay. And I think that some decks might want it and might enjoy it but it for me it just it never makes my cut maybe a budget card i don't know what is this card worth is it worth a lot it's like nothing if, if you talk about versatility though the three we actually have on the board right now or four they hit literally anything and any non-land threat this does not so it's just strictly like you're hitting less things than them a lot of the time this just ends up being murder and i think a lot of the time generous gift beast within and English are making are a little more special than that. Yeah, that's how I feel about it too. Um, I think that th this card's fine. I think it's in C. I don't think it's a bad, unplayable card, but I'm not, I'm not going to be playing it in a lot of decks. Yeah, I was going to put it in D for sure, because I never have, and I can basically promise that I never will play this. And I will also never feel bad about it. Sure, I can go, it's, it's top of D or bottom of C. The card is... It's, it's just mediocre. It's really mediocre. It's not I, like I built budget decks. I built non-budget decks all with red, black in them. And I've never gone to this card. So I don't know what would have to get me to go to this. I don't know what would have to be because all the other options are so much better. Uh, Chaos Warp being one of them because it's a answer any permanent card. Again, weird that we're getting all these in a row that shuffles it in and they get to maybe hit a permanent. I don't know the chances that it's better than the thing you shuffle in. Pretty slim. It's probably going to be a land or an instant or sorcery. And uh, this can actually answer enchantments. Yeah, it answers anything. This is Red's, I think, single best spot removal spell. Pretty much. Yeah, this, you can't really beat this. Um, it's right there next to Generous Gift and Beast Within for me. Uh, it's slightly worse because of the slight little more risk added to it. But that being said, it's still an amazing magic card, especially if you're in mono red because you don't get answers like this. Red this, can't do this. Red cannot do this. And now, in order for red to be able, it's a color pie break, right? Just like you said before. And because we're breaking in the color pie, it gets an extra boost, an extra oomph. Yes, so much oomphier than Bedevil, I promise. Uh, this next one, okay, yeah, this is part of the reason Bedevil just starts looking embarrassing when you go into black. Because mm -hmm. Deadly Rollick is three and a black, exile target creature at, at instant speed. Uh, but if you have a commander, which is like most of the time, uh, it's free. Yeah, uh, this one is an easy S. Best one we've done by far. Oh, it's not even close. Yeah, it's a zero mana spell. I mean, if you're as long as your commander doesn't cost six, seven, eight mana, I'm in for this card. And even when it costs six, seven, eight mana, I'm still kind of in for this card. Depends on what it is. But if you're two, one, two, three, four, five, or five mana, like 100% auto include, I don't even care who it is. 
because a lot of the time it's like, oh, do I play a removal spell or play my commander? It's like, well, maybe my commander is four mana and my removal spell that isn't this is like two mana. It's like, just play your commander and then this is always free. You don't have to worry about it. It lets you double spell, lets you hold up interaction when nobody was expecting it. And it even exiles. It doesn't even destroy. Yeah. You, like, it's just, it, it's every black deck I build, this card goes in. It's it's so good. I mean, it's obviously expensive for a reason. Uh, it's like 30 bucks. Yeah. You should just be, you should be playing Deadly Relic if you can. If you, if you can afford it, play Deadly Relic. Like, please... Don't think that the controlling your planeswalker is this humongous downside. A commander. But yeah, controlling a commander is it a humongous It could be a planeswalker. Downside. It is not. It yeah. is not like, oh, it's only going to be on half the time. I've almost never had this not be on when I have it. Yeah, especially because you get to control it. Like, it's in your hand, so build or play around it. Exactly. Um, like one of Some of my favorite turns are like, I need to answer the threat, but I have Deadly Rock. Oh, no. Oh, wait. I can play my commander and then pass. And now I just have this removal spell for when I need it. It's such a good magic card. Let's you spend so much more mana than Bedevil, which you have to hold up three for. Uh, this next one is Decimate. It's two green red for sorcery. You have to destroy an enchantment land artifact and a creature. This I've seen this be so good, and I've seen it be so bad, and I don't know what to think about it. I've come around on it. Uh, it's a card I would have suggested never playing in the past. It You have to accept this has a big downside. That is, of course, the problem with this. But the card, you will have the times when this rocks in your hand. And you have to accept that. Like, this card will be bad some of the time. But when you flip it around and when this card isn't bad, it's a four mana four for one. And that is extremely good. Now, really, really like three and a half because the land is whatever. The land is. I mean, it, but it, the thing is, there's always a decent land on the field, right? Well, it's not like a full cardish. You know, it's okay. good, but it's like three and a half is what it's I kind of think. Fair enough. But you're going, you're going to get the best, sometimes the best three permanents off the battlefield. It's going to feel amazing. Now, again. I'm, I'll just repeat myself. There is a huge downside to this card. I have been playing it for a while now. I've had it in a couple of decks. I'm not taking it out. I like it. I think it's a good magic card. But just realize that this isn't the best removal spell. But if you like high upside with, you know, some like, maybe this card will not be good, then you can take this card. I'm like in, I'm right around like bottom of B for this, top of C. I'll give you top of C. But I don't know if I can put it next to Anguish I'm making. This card is... It's been good. It's high risk, and it's also not something that's coming out of the gate fast. Four mana sorcery is like, oof, that starts to be really, like, everything we talk about has been an instant so far. But sorcery removal is, like, so much less versatile, so much worse, you know, when you compare it to the exact same card as an instant. But this hits so many things that it makes up for it, assuming you have an enchantment in play, which is usually the tough one. It's a tough one, but it's most times it is in play. Sometimes it's the worst case scenario. I've had to blow up like my own like little stupid thing. It happens sometimes, but you still get a good like two for two even out of that. Like even it's like it's not the best, but it is a two for two. It's not like you're still not losing cards in that situation. Yeah, I don't know if I if I if I can get to the point where I'm playing this. It's got some st stiff competition in green. It it, it does, but um, what this has is a direct creature answer in green red which you only really have beast within so that i play green red a lot so let me tell you it's not easy to answer creatures not 100 percent easy and i just want to say if this was purely my tier let's see anguish you're making would be at the bottom of a and uh decimate would be in b that's what that's what that would change i guess the devil might be in C. I might move everything up a notch. And if this was my tier list, the devil would so be in poop tier. Uh, <laughs> D Spark is next. It's black, white for an instant. Exile a permanent that costs four or more. Kind of efficient. It's exile. It's two mana. You got to figure most of the threats are going to be four or more. D Spark's actually one I'm not a fan of. I've tried it, and there's so many threats three and under in this format because it's become so much more efficient and, and good. You will get uh, mana advantage every single time you play this. But the number of threats you you stare at and go, oh no, I couldn't, I can't answer that because I'm stuck with this card in hand. Is it a bad card? I don't think so. But in black white, the best two removal colors, I've not felt the need to go to this at all. It's got some of the efficiency, but it's got less versatility than it looks like because it can't hit all the utility things. Maybe there's a problem commander, something with cheap cost, high activated ability like Salvala. I really want to kill that card all the time. It'll be awkward sometimes when you don't necessarily have to make it awkward. You can just play like. One more mana for English I'm making, or three less mana, or two less mana for uh, Deadly Rock. Yeah, for this one, I'm just down in D or poop tier. I, I mean, it's not... I'm never going to throw it below Bedevil, so we'll do it here. Yeah, uh, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with putting it in D. Um, I mean, I, I just don't feel the need to go to this. I think Black White is some of the best removal. I think on a budget, this card's okay. Yeah, it's solid. Uh, and it's gonna, it does fit in some decks, but overall, I just avoid it because of how good Black White is at removal. Especially on a budget, since budget decks are going to have way less threats that cost three, two, and one. Very true. So let's go to Defeat the Swarm. It's kind of a little controversial one, I think, for a while. It's one in a black, you destroy a creature or enchantment, and then you lose life equal to its mana cost, but it's black enchantment removal. 
But that's really all it is because everything else about it sucks. Yeah, um, it is a it's an inefficient rule spell for creatures. It's a sorcery, so it's not where we want to be. We're looking for instants when we're talking about, unless we're getting like something special out of it. We really want instants. This kind of has made the cut for me in black, black, blue decks. Sometimes Grixis, that, those three colors that really struggle with the artifact. If you go to green or you go to white, this card is butts. Do not touch it. I'm not even close. Grixis it, decks have trouble with enchantments with, in that. Yes, exactly. So Grixis trouble, uh, decks struggle with the enchantment with mo removal. And I think this is a fine place to be when you have no other choices. Is, is it? I still think the card is kind of whatever. Like, it definitely reads bad, but it does give you one outers, especially if you're playing a tutor or two, and you're like, I have to answer X enchantment, like shutting off my deck. Uh, I have to answer Rest in Peace. Well, the, a black deck might struggle answering Rest in Peace. Having and you play your demonic tutor, you can get this. So it kind of works out to have one answer. It does. It, it feels a little bad. It's like a begrudgingly playable thing. If you're super paranoid about getting shut out by some kind of enchantment, you can play it. What is this, like, bottom of C? Uh, up top of C? Uh, bottom of C. I like Decimate more. Um, I think this is like this is a card that, again, I don't think it's bad, but I don't think it's good. It's just I'm sitting here and I'm like, I will play it because I want to have an answer to enchantments in my black decks. Sometimes I also just accept the fact that Color Pie exists and you're always going to have weaknesses. Uh, one is definitely infinitely more than zero, but it's not like just because this card's in your deck you can always answer every enchantment now. Yeah, so exactly. you're still just gonna have trouble with it. Yeah, and so and you have to play this as a removal spell for creatures a lot, and it's definitely a bad creature removal spell. Yeah, and it's like, what are you gonna do? Not answer a creature because this is your only enchantment removal? This just doesn't really play out like that. Yeah, exactly. What's uh, next? All right, we got Fracture. This is a card neither of us ever play. It's destroy an artifact, enchantment, or our favorite flavor text, Planeswalker. Yeah, um, the problem with this card it just becomes the same thing. It's an instant, but it's in black white, the two best removal colors, and it's essentially disenchant. This is a disenchant. I'm not touching Disenchant. I don't think that's good enough. I'm not going there. I think this is easy, easy, easy poop tier for well, me. So the actual thing we have to talk about is why we don't think Destroy Target Planeswalker is is like tempting to add onto a removal spell. I I mean, it's just not a relevant type. Uh, we, we've said this to a lot. Us, and some, but some people will say, and have said, and will continue to say, uh, we just don't play in Planeswalker metas. Uh, I, so I think that there's something here. Uh, I think that they do make a decent point. The thing is about Planeswalker metas, the, the the quote, I'm putting that in quotes, the Planeswalker meta is a lot of people are playing Planeswalkers, so sometimes they run away and dominate the game. Of course. And sometimes if you play in a creature meta, a lot of creatures will run away with the game. Planeswalkers are an enchantment that can be attacked and removed in that way. They're the worst type in Commander, but yeah, it is nice to be able to answer them sometime. If it's a tact on, if it's what making the card good, if it's what's making the card good, I'm not interested. It's never a tiebreaker, right? You're never going to add Planeswalker to something and you go, well, now I'll play it. It's like if Beast Within said destroy a non-Planeswalker permanent, it'd be equally as good in my eyes. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you 100%. It's like I, creatures kill Planeswalkers, and I understand that like sometimes you're in a plane, like if you're in a Planeswalker heavy meta, my answer to you would still just be like, hey, play more creatures and like have some evasive threats and then they'll kill Planeswalkers. Like, I don't know what you're playing against where it's like planeswalkers and board wipes only yeah uh i think fracture is an easy f uh poop tier actually poop. we don't have f tiers. we here. don't have an f tier this is an easy poop tier and i literally will never play this again we're in black white and the card doesn't hit uh creatures at all i'm out yeah that's rough uh so this is hagram walling where everybody calls, calls us hypocrites for liking four mana murder it's a land on the other side which is the best and only thing that makes this not four mana murder yeah exactly um the key to this card is that it is a land. It's not efficient. It's versatile. It's extremely versatile. Um, MDFCs are incredibly, incredibly powerful. And I'm playing this as a land most of the time when I can afford to play the tap land or when I'm going to miss my land drop. Those are the two situations. Like, I can afford a tap land. Okay, play it. It's my only land drop. Okay, play it. That's how I play these MDFCs that come in tapped every single time. But it bails you out. Now when you're flooding, suddenly you're not flooding as much because now you have a removal spell. A bad removal spell? Yeah, of course a bad removal spell. But that doesn't matter because it's a land most of the time. You know would be worse? A swamp. A swamp. Exactly. This isn't taking the place of a spell in your deck. I cannot emphasize that enough. It's not Hagramalling or Terminate. It's Hagramalling or Swamp. Exactly. And that's why this card is up in the, like, top of B? Uh, all right, that bottom, works for me. It was like top of B, bottom of A. Like start at top of B. We'll yeah. get less hate that way. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like right in that area. The card is extremely good. I'm playing it a lot. I mean, I 
I don't understand. Like, I think that people underestimate MDFCs. I really do. Continually I, underrated. They let me, if you need a 40 land deck, okay, I can play a 35 land deck with five MDFCs, and it feels so much better because you flood so much less. Oh, it's amazing. It's so amazing. It's a blessing. Truly a blessing. Um, Canvas Transformation is a card I really can't get enough with, and I also think that's a color by break time, like, pretty big color by break. One and a green enchanted creature is a 3-3 three, three with no abilities, and you get your card back. So it offsets the 2-mana sorcery, sort of slower, less um, maximally efficient side where you like can't pick your exact moment, but you have to pick a creature in play and then just nullify it, which could be a commander forever, and then they have to figure out how to get rid of this thing, and you already got your card back, so you don't even care. Yeah, cards like this, uh, the key is that it can't hit commanders, because these cards stink when they can't hit commanders. Like that's the, That is the god-honest truth about these cards. But they can hit commanders. Because, like, uh, there's the one that turns into a treasure. Well, the c commander just gets sacrificed. It doesn't actually answer the commander. This locks the commander as a 3-3 on the battlefield, which is so good. A lot of decks struggle to answer enchantments. We just went over how Grixis decks have trouble answering enchantments at all. Decks are built around commanders. When the commander is locked in the battlefield with no abilities, some decks will just struggle. You'll shut the whole deck down. It's amazing. This card has been overperforming every single time I cast it, and I'm... It's basically an auto include for in green for me, like this this and beast within. I'm never not playing, even if I'm a creature deck, even if I'm a fifty creature deck. I still need answers to creatures in mono green. Uh, maybe yeah. As you, it depends on how many colors. Like I I don't find myself having to play this card very much, and I play a lot of green. Heavy green is what I'm mostly talking about. Like if I was green red, green, or like blue green, I'm in. Okay, that's fair. Uh, I have this in like top of B. Yeah, me too. Yeah, like right next to Hagram Mauling, like same type of area. Uh, the, the, this card cantrips for some reason. Why does it do that? <laughs> Such a strange thing for a green card to do. So amazing. Yeah, it answers creatures and cantrips. That's a green card, of course. Uh, Kroos and Grip, also a green card. One of our most controversial takes of all time. It's two and a green, and it can't be responded to, and it destroys an artifact or enchantment, and we never play it. I... I I don't like it. Um, three mana to answer artifacts or enchantment, I don't think it's very good. And I know we've had this conversation over and over again. People in our comments, people in our Discord, love to bring up the, what about getting around counter spells? How important is that? What about stopping Etherflux Reservoir? And it's just like, these are very specific things that are niche, and I don't think it's worth paying the extra mana. I've never felt the need to go this card, and I don't feel like it's had a negative impact on my deck building. I would rather play, and I'm being honest, Nature's uh, Return to Nature, a card I am not advocating for playing ever over this card because it costs one less mana, and one less mana is such a big difference. I don't think Split Second is a rel relevant enough ability for me. One of my favorites is Nature's Claim. That's not on here, but we love that card. It's amazing. It's an S. It's, it's crazy. It's super good. But uh, it's like, would I rather save two mana every single time or 1% of the time destroy an artifact in a way that couldn't be done with Nature's Claim? No. I mean, I'll just take, just give me two mana every single time. That's super more relevant. You can't, you can't like prepare for everything. Some things are just going to get you. The, like Aether Flux Reservoir if they just play the card and it resolves, they could shoot you for 50 before you can cross and grip this thing. I don't understand what we're, like, getting away with. They have priority. Yeah, also, another thing, uh, like I said, this is... I wanted to put everything on this list, but like I said, I couldn't even fit everything. Like, Nature's Claim didn't make it because it, it didn't even appear in, like, the top 30. Which is... This thing did, which makes me upset. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, maybe, if you if y'all like this video, let us know because we would love to do a part two because there's plenty more spot removal. There's so much. Spot removal is so important to Commander and there's so much of it running around. Yeah, so Cross and Grip, I think, is sort of like the confirmation bias Nature's Claim where it's like, just because it can save you, and I 100% believe, I'm not doubting that it is like, by itself, saved you, won you games, but it's like, you don't know that, you don't really see the cost of it when it's in your hand, or you can't play it, or you can't play the turn sooner because it's three mana and not one mana. Don't like it. I think it's top of D. Um, it's bad. But I, at least that there's something here. I get with where it's coming from. I'm not like the other two. I'm, I'm not I'm probably not touching those ever. Cross and grip. I don't know. I I'm not playing it either. Anything D and lower, I'm basically never touching. So yeah, a cross and grip bad. Yeah, I mean like if you know we're talking things that exist, we can say like one mana counter spell. Like that'd be a really good card. But three mana counter spell that couldn't be countered, that card would stink. Yeah, and also I want to state. You're allowed, you, you can go to our comment section, you can yell at us and tell us how we're wrong. That's all fine and dandy. You don't have to be, you're wrong, you're idiots, and you're dumb. It's, it's like, not an objective thing. We don't like Cross and Grip. It's probably not How many times do I have to say this line? We are not uh, an authority on Commander. We have opinions. We're pretty passionate about our opinions. We give them on the internet. And guess what? We're going to keep doing it. 
Doesn't mean that we're right. Doesn't mean you're right. We're not idiots for not liking the card you like. Yeah, this. Uh, sorry, I, I kind of think it stinks, but we can. We're allowed to disagree. It's cool. We're not, neither one of us is objectively right, and we can move on to Lightning Bolt. One mana, three damage, instant and red. Hmm. I'm low on this. I mean, it's okay, and maybe mono red is exactly where I'll play it. This is a highly played card in Commander, and I think it's because it's so good. In other formats, uh, Lightning Bolt has been a staple of standard, a staple of modern. How about just every format? Like you see, every everything except for like uh, vintage. vintage. Literally every format that's ever been in Lightning Bolt has been a staple because it is an amazing, amazing magic card. Undoubtedly, um, they would never print this card probably again. It, like if it w didn't exist, we would never see Lightning Bolt in the future. Uh, but it exists and it's amazing. But in Commander, it's just so medium. It kills a lot of things. It is efficient, but it's hyper efficient when you hit something that's low toughness. It's kind of like the opposite of D-Spark, where it's like you can only hit little tiny things. But I don't necessarily want to only hit little tiny things. Yeah, I. it's tough. I think I'm on bottom of C. That's where I was going to put it. It's just like I'm probably not playing this. I can see, especially if you get into like maybe more competitive where this can do things. No, I, it's not for me. I played it in a mono red deck, and it was okay. I feel like it Just can only okay. ever be okay. Yeah, it wasn't It wasn't the card that I was super excited about, but it wasn't bad. Right, you're not even really getting too much mana advantage out of it. Yeah. You I probably guess. had like a three-mana thing. Yeah, sometimes there's a random, like... like Oracle Moldiah is like the best one I can even think of. No. Pathbreaker Ibex is the best one you can think of. That is the getting away with murder. I'll kill your six drop with my bolt. Don't make this thing sound like it's an <laughs> S-tier card. What is an S-tier, though, and you may have already seen this coming, it's Moxville.com. It's the best way to build decks online, and it's actually better than Deadly Rollick because you wouldn't even know Deadly Rollick cost zero mana if you couldn't look it up on Moxfield. Yeah, um, Moxfield.com is a deck-building website, the only one that nitpicking nerds use, and the only ones we're going to use going into the future. Seriously, it is absolutely amazing. You, everyone knows how good it is. We keep telling you, and we're going to keep telling you every single video. Sort the deck however you want. Mana value, price, uh, tags. Tags. There's a lot more stuff. I can't. I don't know why. I can't think of all of them because I. It's it, too many. It's like the, it's like at the end of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull when the aliens beam in all the information in the universe into her head and then she explodes. Oh, exactly like that. It's actually. just like that. Yeah, exactly. There's so much information on Moxfield that your head would explode if it was beamed directly into your head. Which is why we only tell you three or four of time. So let's go to Path to Exile. It exiles a creature, but they get to search for a basic land and put on a play tapped. But also, the little wrinkle in this one is you could do it to your own things. Yeah, um, it's fine. It's <clears throat> yeah, good magic card. It's interesting because, like, I don't play this often, but I can undoubtedly tell you it's definitely good. Very efficient. It is extremely efficient. The ramp makes me not want to play it super early. So, like, something like, like I will swords, um, you know, a... Anything that looks at me the wrong way if I feel like it's a threat. Whatever. Ex exactly. But, like, I don't want to path anything that looks at me the wrong <sighs> way. Because I want to... It's a little... So, it's definitely distinctively worse than Path to Exile. Or, than Swords to Plusher. Because it is, it is Path to Exile. Right. Still a good magic card. Where do you have this? I'm thinking like B. I'm like, yeah. Where? I throw in the bottom of B. Like I really can't fault anybody for playing this. And I like the out for like token decks turning into rampant growth. Like that's pretty cool. That makes adds some versatility to it because it's not very versatile. It only hits creatures. But if you can turn it into weird rampant growth, that's pretty cool. Wouldn't fault anybody for playing it. Not a card we turn to all the time. Oh, yeah, I think uh, it, for everything B and up, it's like good magic cards. You're gonna see in a lot of decks. Uh, doesn't mean we're gonna play them 100 percent of the time, but they're all very good. They're great. Uh, Pong fine rapid hybridization also amazing. Blue doesn't answer creatures, and for some reason there's like four or five blue cards that do, and so then that makes everybody think that blue can just answer creatures because there's so many of them and they're all pretty good. Destroy a creature, can't be regenerated, and then they make a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, uh, these cards are exactly the same. Um, these are another one. The key is color pie break, right? Because it's nothing. This is a whatever fine removal spell. This to swords, like it's a joke. It is a joke, but the fact is this is a color pie break. When I'm in a deck like a blue-green deck that struggles answering creatures, Two thumbs up, I'm in, go in, get the Pognify in my deck every single time. I'm, I'm like top of B with these. Uh, it's purely colored, though. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of annoying that um, black can't answer enchantments as, as well. Because, like, you can play a blue-green deck and have, like, six solid one-for-one one, or sometimes two-for-one answers to creatures. Like, Kenner's Transformation, Rapid Hybridization, Pognify, Reality Shift, Beast Within. And it's just like, 
Black can't answer an enchantment? Yeah, blue green is intended not to, shouldn't be able to answer creatures. Like, it's not a problem. But it's not a problem. There's like seven of them right. now. I mean, they're carrying hard, but there's still a bunch of them. Yeah, exactly. There's the one that turns them into birds and the four fours. Raven form, resculpt. Yeah, it's just, it's kind of silly. Look at all of them. Not on this list because we didn't have enough room. Except for reality shift, which is right now. You exile a creature <laughs> for one and a blue and they manifest a top card. Can we just put it like here? It's, it's, we kind of just talked about it. It's literally Pognify's best buddy. I do want to say, um, we're not going to get a chance to talk about it in this video because there wasn't room for resculpt. I'm higher on Rescope than I am on Pognify. I like Rescope. I like Rescope more than Pognify, more than Reality Ship. Might put it in A tier because I'm much higher on it. It's like, yeah, somebody was like, hey, why don't you try this one? And we're like, let's try it. And it's like, whoa. Whew. I've, been, I've been very happy with it. It's been my favorite of like the package that we just talked about. It's pretty nice. I want to find out at what point do I care about the token's power toughness that I give away? Because 4-4, four, four, still not feeling it. Yeah, exactly. Still not feeling the impact. Uh, Reclamation Sage, one of the best ETB creatures just ever. ETBs, destroy an artifact or enchantment. This is what I want to do for three mana because I can blink it and recur it and flicker it and reanimate it and blink it and reanimate it and all those sorts of things where you can't really do that with Cross and Grip. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Reclamation Sage, the key to it is playing in a creature deck. If you have ways to repeat this. Oh, like toolbox said, too. All of the stuff you just said, literally all that, adding tutors with uh, on top of all that. Now this card is amazing. Um, it's inefficient, sorcery speed answer, but it comes with a body. So if you can throw a scroll clamp on it, sacrifice it, recur it. Panharmonicon. All of these, there's a million and one sh little tiny things you can add to your Reclamation Sage to make it better. And that's what makes this character so good. You're willing to take inefficient, bad answers in your creature deck if they're creatures because it makes your deck stronger and it synergized. Makes your creatures worth more. They're two for ones, they're three for ones, they're value. Cross and Grip doesn't work with any of the things we just said uh, about Reclamation Sage. And do you want to put it at like bottom of A? It's I'm a like, green staple. It's bottom of A, top of B. I'm fine with, I'm fine with bottom of A. Uh, I want to say another card didn't make this list. Druid of Purification, a card where just... You'll see it in part two, hopefully. Yeah. I, I, I trust Commander players to play that one that much. I hope you like it because I hope you like this video because we got there's so many for part two. Like, so many. How many have come up this video already? Four. Uh, snuff out. <laughs> you, uh, you have to control a swamp, but if you do, it's free and you got to pay four life, but you're destroying a non-black creature. Ooh, people don't like this one because it says non-black, but as it turns out, it's free, and I'll kind of take what I can get, and this is still completely amazingly efficient. If if you can control a swamp reliably, which most black decks can, so if you can control a swamp reliably, this card is amazing. Zero mana removal is no joke. Um, it's literally... Every ma one more mana you add, things get way worse. Like, you start... If you start at zero, it's like... Perfect. Best you can do. Couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. And then it's like, uh, one mana, it's like still really good, but like distinctively worse. It's like, it's like, there's such a big difference. Two, one to two, it's like, the du jump, it's double. It's double the amount of mana. And you start like really questioning, do I want to play this? Because I got a lot of one mana stuff I can play. Three starts getting hold, hard to hold up. Four is like impossible to hold anything up. Exactly. And like every mana you add, like we just said, just makes a, a huge difference. If I can get a zero mana, I will take restriction and not being able to hit black creatures. I'll take the hit. I don't get to hit. 15% of creatures, whatever the number is, 22% of creatures. It's zero mana. This is, yeah, this I'm is. I'm black. I've got the other things taken care of. I think this is an A. Uh, very, I think so too. Very good card. I put it like right here. Well, that is the weirdest spot you could have Right chosen. there is where I put it. That's. How about right here? There or at the other end? Because I don't know. Chaos. Chaos Warp, distinctly worse than Beast Within Generous Gift. Well, yes. It's a color pie thing. But distinctly, but literally. Distinctly worse that you know that the, that I do. stuff out can go in the middle. The, oh, I know. That's just like my like. I don't know how much worse they are. But I did the math. They're, they're pretty close guards. There's an abacus behind this computer. Source of plowshares. Uh, let's just put it right here. It's one mana and you exile a creature and then they gain life. Who cares? This is one of the most efficient things ever printed, and you can't really beat it. Except they kind of did with Deadly Rock. But other than that, I don't know which one's better. Uh, I'm fine with putting it below. Um, they're both absolutely amazing cards. One mana answer any creature with a basically. No downside unless it's a ridiculously huge creature. I have seen it be a downside now. Like, I'd say one in 20 times. It's like, oh, man, that's a lot of life to give away. But that same side is you can hit your own thing and gain life. Yeah, exactly. So if you flip the script, if you have the 12-12, all right, I'll gain 12 life. I mean, again, it's the most efficient one mana, answer anything. Not only answer it, exile it, get it out of the game. I didn't even want to say that much. Let's go to Terminate. Black, green, black, red, instant destroy a creature. It can't be regenerated. It's um not it's 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 on the efficient side, but it's not versatile. Yeah, um, I'm I'm not in for it. Um, again, we're in two colors. We're in red. We're in black. We're in black. We have lots of good creature answers. 
If I'm a creature deck, I definitely am not going. Not even close. And if I'm not a creature deck, I just I'm like deadly relic, snuff out. There's just so much other stuff that I want to go to before this card. There's some th in three mana you start to get into like two for one territory. It depends on what like calling on command and stuff. Hagramalling. Chaos warp. Hagramalling is gonna be part of your removal suite. Not necessarily a one for one switch, but it's still worth noting that it's in your deck over terminate. Yeah, and in a red black deck, I'm happier to play. Um, uh, feed the swarm as well. That's true. You might just be really hurting for enchantment removal. So, terminate is just like the most fine whatever card that I never play. You want to put it like here? It's definitely a D tier. Definitely. Like, I think it's worse than D Spark. Like, I okay, worse than D Spark, like right here. Yeah, I think it's better than Bedevil because I think they're really close to the same card. Yeah, they're both pretty bad. They're both not cards I'm looking to play. Again, you can tell us in the comments about how you disagree, and we will gladly cool. Cool we'll gla disagree. We'll, 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 we'll gladly debate and talk about it, and we don't have to. And we and guess what? At the end, we don't have to agree, and that's completely fine. Nothing that, is wrong with the universe when two people don't agree on especially something. Especially in Magic the Gathering uh, Commander, where a format is so complex that I don't think it could be solved in any world. Yes. Utter end, though, we can solve whatever. A two black, white instant. Exile target, not land permanent. So it's like anguish I'm making, but you get... You save three life, but you pay one more mana. Mm -mm. Too much mana. I'm just it's we've we talked about how big one mana makes, and this I think it's pushed to poop tier. I'm not. This is really one that I don't look to play ever. Like you're not, you're not double spelling with this. Ever. Four mana is a lot for a one for one. Now, when we're four manaing and we can get like a two for one or a three for one, it's much more interesting. Like that's where I want for my if I'm going to go four mana, Ugh, four mana one for one. I'm out. I think that's like. That's the hard cap. The only one that's interesting is Hagramalling, and we mentioned before, it's a land most of the time. That's why. Right. Then it, then it becomes a... If you like missing a land drop, it's like a, you could say it's a ramp spell, which is a little dramatic, but that's kind of what we're looking at here versus uh, Exile thing yeah. only. Not I have to hold up four mana. It's a, good, it's a fine card, and again, just I never... It's one where I build decks. I never feel the need to go to it. It's just I never get pushed down there. Red, green or black, white. We keep I keep saying it. Amazing at removal, not going to this. I love this one because it highlights how important oof being a sorcery is. It's Vindicate. The text is better than English I'm making, but it's a sorcery. It destroys a permanent for three mana at sorcery speed, which ends up being like, I don't want to use this because I can't maximize my timing. I can't wait for a threat to hit somebody else and then not answer it at all and just go, hmm, now I don't have to worry about it because if a threat can kill me, I kind of have to just waste my mana and kill it. Vindicate's one where it's like, if I have it and don't have other options, it's obviously going to perform. And a lot of times you won't even notice the difference between this and the other ones, but it is, I think, distinctively worse. I think sorcery versus instant for removal spells is huge. I mean, I think I'd rather have other end. Um, I don't know if I'd rather have other end. Uh, I think the one mana is so big. I think the instant is about as big. Mm, it Maybe. You might be right. But I don't think I'd rather have other end. I'm higher on Vindicate than I am on other end. Um, I really. So you want to just do this? I would have had it in the bottom of D. Oh, okay. We'll do that. Yeah, I and I think this because um, the reason I want it there is like it's a card I feel like can perform without like holding you back too much. The floor is not abysmally low. Exactly. Like I feel like four mana it really makes a difference. I feel like naturalize, which which is basically what we put in poop tier. Those are cards I'm going to tell you basically I would avoid those most of the time. Vindicate, at least it's got it's got something going well, for it. Naturalize and Disenchant can't be in poop tier because they have to be above Cross and Grip. Oh. Like you said he'd put them above it, so they have to be in D, D tier. Next is Wear Tear. It's a Fuse card. You're paying one in red to destroy an artifact or a white to destroy an enchantment, or both if you pay one red white, which is a straight up two for one. Yeah, this card is a really nice two for one. I love that you can cast either side when you want it to. The, it's versatile. It's efficient. I, I'm a big fan of this card. Especially. It does both. Three mana, two for ones. It, that's a good rate for a two for one. That's but then, or it's a two or one mana, one for one when you don't care about the other thing. Exactly. So this card is super solid. Um, I'm like bottom of A, top of B ish. I really never, I almost never don't play this card. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little lower on it than you. Not quite as high. Uh, it's still really good. Um, very obviously good. I mean, it's two cards that are. Real cards is just put together with no downside. Yeah, they're both playable, sort like pseudo playable cards. But well, they're cards that exist and remove things, and now it's just both. Yeah, exactly. So I will take both. Instant speed, instant speed, very big on this card. Yeah, here comes the sort of like outlier in terms of how much mana this thing well, has to hold up because you never don't play it, and it feels pretty good because it's a three for one. I was very specific when I was mentioning. When I was mentioning going up to four mana and five mana, I it's specifically said for one for ones. Because when we start going into big 
giant like uh, three for ones. Which like, you, like this card that hasn't been named yet? Yeah, like Wing Grace's Judgment, which has been on screen the whole time. Don't worry about that. Uh, Wing Grace's Judgment, I and like I don't think this card's broken. I don't think it's insane, but it's very good, and I am definitely happy when I'm playing it. Not an auto include, but I have played it, and I never really feel bad about it. I feel like it's somewhere in, it might be like bottom of B or something. Yeah, I agree. Um, the card's not broken, it's not busted, and I'm not trying to like advocate as this like, this card's amazing, you it's should rock be. solid. It is rock solid. It's uh, like the mystic confluence of green black. And you also, you want to make sure that with your spot removal that you include some two for ones when you can, because it's very nice. Uh, all these one for ones, you need them. They're important to uh, making sure that your opponents don't run away with the game early and often, but. Having a two two for one, three for one later will get you card advantage. This is basically when you have a wing grace's judgment, it's kind of like sort of like a card draw spell in that it gets you some advantage. Yes. Let's so shout outs to Wear Tear, Canvas Transformation, and Wing Grace's Judgment and Decimate, sure, for being uh, not one for ones. Yeah, we do these tier lists every other week. So why don't you go check out one of our other tier lists? BZ, which one are you thinking? I think we gotta go to the highly underrated villains tier list. Villains tier list? Check it out. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.